The tub's owner says he was getting ready to enjoy a margarita in the backyard when he heard wrestling in the trees. He thought it was a neighbor next door, but lo and behold, it turned out to be a hot tub loving bear. The bear's soak only lasted a few minutes. He then lumbered around the yard, actually finishing up that margarita. All in all, a pretty good afternoon for Mr. Bear. With intern Louie, that's this week's edition of Lola's Lowdown. <laughs> that's what you want on a Friday, a little margarita in the hot tub. <laughs> the bear then climbed and <laughs> fell asleep, so pretty relaxed. That's our time for now. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you back here Monday. News 3 at 5 starts right now. And right now at 5, three members of the Beloit Board of Education have stepped down. We'll tell you how parents are reacting. Madison police say there's been an increase in auto thefts across the city. The solutions they have for crimes. And the process of moving the iconic carousel has begun at Ellis Deli. We'll hear from the owners as they say goodbye to the Madison landmark. This is News 3 at 5. Thanks for staying with News 3. A whirlwind of controversy leaves three open seats on the Beloit School Board. It comes after four board members held a special meeting Tuesday night to discuss the conduct of the board president. During that meeting, they voted to remove Lori Endress from her seat as president. And shortly after that decision, the vice president and treasurer submitted resignations. Our Jamie Perez is just back from speaking from parents uh, in Beloit about this issue. That's right. Well, none of the current board members or the ones that resigned wanted to talk, but I did get a chance to get reaction from parents. Now, they did not want to be shown on camera, but they say the district has had issues for a while, so they're happy to see who they pick to fill those vacant seats. A divided community has left the Beloit School District in disarray. Parents of former students who didn't want to be seen on camera say these recent events aren't surprising. Since this current board has been in place, the three that quit were obstructionists anyway. We pulled our kids out of the you know, school district of Beloit, you know, simply because decisions of the board. You know, they don't do anything on bullying. You know, they don't want to, it, it seems like they want to segregate more than unite the students. According to a current board member, unfriendly email exchanges between the president and interim superintendent sparked the special meeting in the first place. My first opinion was th those who quit or left, you know, they just show you know, where they stand. They don't want to fight for what's right for the kids and, you know, the community and all that. And those who chose to stay, you know, it shows me that they they have the gumption to fight for what's right. Not only does the district now have to find a permanent superintendent, they need to fill the seats of president, vice president, and treasurer. As much as I'd like to see them gone now, and maybe we can get people in there who really want to care about our students and be good stewards of taxpayer funds, it makes me as a citizen question why were those people in there to begin with when they quit so willingly um, at the first sign of trouble. I'm just happy they're gone um, and I hope the board does its diligence uh, in putting three new board members in place um, that will put the interests of our kids first. The school board is holding a special meeting tomorrow from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Board of Education Office, Room 106, to elect new members. There are also reports by the local paper there that some members of the community are planning to protest that meeting tomorrow. We'll be sure to keep you updated on what happens with that. Jamie, thank you very much. Thanks, Jamie. All right, let's get a look at your first alert weather as a beautiful and comfortable weekend arrives. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield in the Weather Center, Dave. Yeah, I think you could make the argument that this is the best weekend all summer across southern Wisconsin with lots of sunshine, comfortable conditions, low humidity and temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s. Platteville, we're looking at pretty much wall to wall sunshine. Similarly, in Madison on the WIC TV Skycam, lots of blue sky showing up. Temperatures are in the mid 70s for the most part across southern Wisconsin. Boscobel, the warm spot at 82, 79 in Janesville, 75 in Watertown and 76 in Madison. But look at these dew points. 40s and low 50s. It feels so comfortable outside. Check out this 24 hour dew point change. About 20 to in some spots 30 degrees less humid compared to this time on Thursday. We'll take that any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Wind speeds right now not too bad out of the north and east at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. This evening mostly clear and comfortable with temperatures falling through the 70s into the mid 60s when I come back in just a few minutes. We'll talk about this nice weather continuing for the next couple of days, but 
We'll also talk about that humidity returning on Monday in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Dave, thank you. A sad day for the Wisconsin Badgers wrestling community as one of their own passes away. 21-year-old redshirt junior Eli Stickley of the wrestling team died in a car crash in Illinois. It happened on I-74 about 25 miles east of the Quad Cities. The Wisconsin wrestling team in a statement says, quote, their hearts are heavy after hearing about the loss of Eli Stickley. He had qualified for the 2018 NCAA Wrestling Championships this year and was an academic All-American. According to the Athletes in Action Wisconsin Twitter page, they'll be meeting at Heritage Hall at 7 p.m. to remember Eli Stickley. Police are investigating after a Madison woman running across the Beltline was injured last night after being hit by a van. Monona police say it happened around 745 at Highway 12 near Broadway. After a report of a woman running across the Beltline, officers were driving to the scene and they were told that a vehicle had hit the woman. Investigators say the 23-year-old woman had exited a vehicle near Southtown Drive and Royal Avenue and was running down the east bound Beltline on ramp, then crossing eastbound lanes of traffic. She was hit by a van driven by a 68 year old Madison woman. The woman hit by the van was taken to a hospital and is listed in stable condition. Well, lock those car doors. More than 200 vehicles have been stolen in Madison so far this year. In June, 38 vehicles were stolen. 36 of them had the keys inside. Madison police say the crimes are often committed by juveniles. They fear that these joy rides will eventually cause a serious accident. We're concerned that uh, without having any driving history, they're going to crash into a car that might contain your mom, dad, sister, uncle, aunt, uh, and cause, you know, great bodily harm or death to them or wrap themselves around a, a, a pole or a tree. The issue isn't contained to the city of Madison. Verona, Fitchburg, Middleton have all reported similar issues. The names of the people involved in a fatal head-on crash in Dodge County have now been released. Dodge County Sheriff's Office says it happened around 2.30 on July 4th on the Highway 16 bypass near 2nd Street in the township of Emmett. Deputies say 21-year-old Kyle Cool of Watertown was driving a vehicle westbound. It was pronounced dead at the scene. 26-year-old Sarah Steger of San Francisco was the driver of the eastbound vehicle and sustained serious injuries. Deputies say one of the vehicles crossed the center line but did not say which vehicle crossed the center line. The crash remains under investigation. A Middleton man was arrested after he allegedly fired a weapon out of a car and evaded police after threatening people that he knew with a flare gun. Officials say 20-year-old Andrew Stoltz was sought by Madison police Wednesday. Police say they witnessed his car drive through a chain link fence before heading toward East Campus Mall where the car hopped a curb, drove over a terrace and continued down the mall. The car was spotted again early Friday morning driving along State Street. Madison police followed the car. Stoltz attempted to evade police but was unsuccessful. He was arrested on multiple counts including disorderly conduct while armed. Tensions are rising between the U.S. and China over trade after President Trump initiated new tariffs. The U.S. slapped levies on $34 billion of Chinese goods. That number to increase to $50 billion in the next two weeks. China says it had no choice but to strike back, matching those tariffs on U.S. products, adding necessary counterattacks are now in place. Wisconsin dairy farmer Stacy Limber, who voted for the president, says she has her own concerns. Do you think he created an issue that wasn't really an issue from your point of view? Right now, yes, and in hindsight, yes. Wisconsin soybean farmers are expected to be hit the hardest and the fastest by those tariffs. The U.S. exports 30 percent of its soybeans to China every year. Here in Wisconsin, farmers exported $7.2 million worth of the crop last year. But with those new tariffs in effect, China is expected to stop importing U.S. soybeans altogether and start getting them from other countries. Without exporting to China, farmers will need to sell those products domestically, flooding the market. Prices will drop. Wisconsin farmers will make less money from this year's crop and the state's economy would take a hit. So you have the direct effect that happens at the farm. Then you have an indirect effect that happens to the labor that they hire, for example, or the dollars that they spend in their local feed store or veterinarian or those other types of things. And then you have a next effect, which is what those people who earn those dollars from the farm spend in their community on groceries and health care and all of the other things.
The U.S. Chamber of Commerce says retaliatory tariffs threaten about a billion dollars worth of Wisconsin exports. The iconic carousel from Ella's Deli is about to have a new home. We reported yesterday Epic Systems, the medical software giant in Verona, purchased it along with other decor from the now closed restaurant, but now it has to get moved. And Charlotte Deleste joins us in studio with details. Charlotte? Eric and Susan, we've all seen the carousel, but what many of us may not know is the rich history behind it. Generations have taken a spin or two on it, and it was originally built in 1927 in Leavenworth, Kansas. It even operated in a park for nearly two decades, just a few miles from Niagara Falls. Restored after heat and moisture damage, it found a new home at Ella's Deli along East Washington Avenue in the 1980s. And now, as the owners of Ella's Deli have moved on to retirement, a new chapter for the historic carousel begins. I think it's just the, the perfect fit as far as the collection of the carousel is concerned. They support the arts. Um, they will maintain it. They will display it in, in areas that are very creative out there. It's been a bit of an emotional whirlwind for Balkan as he watches 40 plus years of his life's work wrapped up in boxes and shipped off. He says he appreciates the sensitivity the movers are showing and the care they are taking. He also says it's important to him that the carousel and the collection of art from Ella's Deli stays together. They are hopeful that the actual building will remain a restaurant and details on that are still being worked out. While Balkan and his wife Judy are ready to move on to the next chapter of their lives, they want to thank Madison, Ella's customers, and especially the hundreds of employees who've helped make Ella special over the past 41 years. Susan and Eric? That is a long time. Lots of memories from Ella's Deli for all of us here. Charlotte, thank you. More to come tonight on News 3 at 5. Up next, the driver of a semi that was involved in a crash that killed members of a Canadian hockey team has been charged. We will bring you the very latest. And time is running out for the Thai soccer team trapped in a cave as oxygen levels start to decrease. And on Wall Street, the markets rally after a jobs report. The Dow up 100 points. The Nasdaq soars even higher, climbing 102. The S&P jumped 22. And we'll be right back.
The driver of a semi truck that hit the Humboldt Broncos hockey team bus back on April 6th faces 29 charges now in relation to that crash. 16 people were killed and another 13 injured. Jaskarat Sidhu is charged with 16 counts of dangerous operation of a motor vehicle causing death and 13 counts of dangerous operation of a motor vehicle causing bodily injury. The Humboldt Broncos of the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League were on the team bus heading to a playoff game when the collision occurred. 10 players, the bus driver, an athletic therapist, the head coach, assistant coach, and two radio broadcasters were all killed. Sidhu is set to appear in court next week. Vice President Mike Pence defending U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement against what he calls, quote, spurious attacks. Pence, along with DHS Secretary Kirsten Nielsen, visited ICE headquarters in Washington, met with employees there. The vice president criticized Democrats for calls to abolish the agency following the detention and deportation of immigrants along the U.S. southern border. In this White House, let me be clear, we are with you 100 percent. And as the president said last night, we will always stand proudly with the brave heroes of ICE and our Border Patrol. The clash between Democrats and the administration followed the Trump administration policy of separating children from their parents after they crossed the border. The president later reversed that policy. The race to rescue the Thai soccer team found alive in a cave turned deadly overnight for one volunteer diver who passed out underwater. Crews are working frantically to pump water out of the cave where 12 boys and their soccer coach are trapped. With so many workers in the underground complex, authorities are rushing to install a three mile long oxygen tube. A former Thai Navy SEAL diver died from lack of oxygen overnight when he passed out underwater. Authorities are trying to get the floodwaters to a level where the boys would not have to dive but could swim out with life jackets on with their heads above water. British police are searching for a small vial feared to be contaminated with traces of a deadly nerve agent. Two people are in critical condition after coming into contact with that toxin. Victim Dawn Sturgis and her partner Charlie Rowley are fighting for their lives after being exposed to the deadly nerve agent Novichok. It's the same kind of toxin used in the poisoning of a double agent and his daughter four months ago. Rowley's brother is still struggling to comprehend what's happened. He's my younger brother. I love him to bears. I don't want to think anything to happen to him. And yet it has. Now, what is not known, or police at least won't say, is where the couple came into contact with that nerve agent. Today, police are scouring areas to find out where it came from before it harms anyone else. So far, they have sealed off six different sites. A historic boat at the Detroit Riverside Marina was destroyed by fire. The ship, the SS St. Clair, is one of the oldest steamships in the country and one of two former Boblo Island boats. The ship ferried people to the island amusement park on the Detroit River for 89 years, but stopped operation in 1991. In 2016, a collector bought the old ship with restoration plans. No one was injured in the fire, and the cause is still under investigation. All right, as we mentioned, the humidity has lifted. It's been an absolutely beautiful Friday, and it should maybe stick around at least for a while. Dave Caulfield. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. That's you. I was I was just I was You're in the moment. You're just enjoying the weather. Yes, out exactly. It's so so nice out here. I think Mother Nature has been bumping a little bit of Ed Sheeran lately because this weather is perfect out here. Don't believe me? This is what we're dealing with. A lot of high pressure, very nice conditions, low humidity, any rain well to the south and southeast. We do have a couple of showers in Minnesota, but they'll lose steam as they head closer to here and won't impact us at all. Mild temperatures around right now. Again, those showers will not have the juice to get all the way to southern Wisconsin. So we're enjoying sunny skies and very, very comfortable conditions. Temperatures are in the 70s across the area. Mostly we do have an 82 in Boscobel, so don't want to forget about that. 79 in Janesville, 79 also in Lone Rock and 76 in Madison. But folks, we have dew points in the low 40s in some spots like Sheboygan, 44 the dew point in the Wisconsin Dells. 
50 in Madison. That is a huge change from yesterday. Look at this, 20 to 30 degrees less humid compared to this time on Thursday. This is weather you could spend all day outside if you wanted to. And speaking of all day, let's take an all day look at our time lapse in Madison on the Edgewater Skycam. A nice sunrise, really maybe like one or two clouds today, but that's about it. It is just absolutely gorgeous outside. And here's a look right now at what's happening in downtown Madison on the Edgewater Skycam. Wall to wall sunshine. Highs today only made it into the upper 70s, and that's because we had a little bit of an easterly component to the wind. So that blew some air from Lake Michigan. So a little bit cooler than normal, but closer to normal as we head into tomorrow. Four grills is perfect on the grill cast and everything is coming up roses for Saturday and Sunday. If you didn't get enough grilling in for July 4th, the next couple of days will be fantastic for that as well. Our high temperature trend is showing some changes on the horizon. However, especially as we head into Monday, highs will be in the upper 80s with feels like temperatures in the low to mid 90s and then temperatures approaching 90 as we head into next week as well. So the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook showing much more of the same as we head into the middle of this month. Temperatures will probably be warmer than average and a little bit less rain than we would typically see. So if you're a fan of the typical summer weather, it'll be here for a while. It looks like tonight mostly clear and comfortably cool with temperatures in the mid 50s. Tomorrow mostly sunny and warm with highs in the low 80s. Future track showing things staying pretty quiet, comfortable and cool tonight. Temperatures will fall through the 70s and 60s into the 50s. Maybe a few clouds here and there, but that's about it. And another very nice day on Saturday. Temperatures in the low 80s. And as we head into Sunday, I think we'll be a little bit warmer, maybe a little bit more cloud cover in spots, but another great day on the way Sunday. But Monday, as we mentioned, is when things start to change. As we take a look at the seven day forecast, humidity comes back. Temperatures in the upper 80s, close to 90. Feels like temperatures by the time we get to the middle of next week will be in the mid to upper 90s and the chances for rain come back by the time we get to Thursday and Friday. So here's your first alert traffic update, taking a live look at Park Street on the Beltline. Everything looking pretty good in both directions. No major problems showing up across Dane County. No accidents or incidents to report. Maybe some slow go on the Beltline closer to John Nolan Drive eastbound, but that's pretty normal for this time of day. Overall, though, things are looking pretty good closer to Seminole Highway. Your drive times this evening, Verona Road to John Nolan, that's five minutes, an average speed of around 50 miles per hour. John Nolan to the interstate, also five minutes, with an average speed close to 50 miles per hour. And that is your first alert traffic. Enjoy these beautiful conditions over the next couple of days because Mother Nature wants to bring back that humidity as we head into Monday. So yeah, definitely nice. get outside as much as you can. It's going to be a nice weekend. Very oh, yes. nice. All right, thanks, Dave. Ahead on New Street 5, residential buildings are changing the way they do business as package deliveries keep rising. We'll have that story when we return. Stay with us.
FedEx and UPS say their package deliveries are growing every year as more and more consumers shop online. That's causing developers of high-rise residential buildings to rethink their design and how they manage deliveries. Wendy Gillette reports from New York on the innovations. Here you go. It's crunch time at the Atlas, a residential building in Midtown Manhattan. When packages... You can hang them right there. Dry cleaning orders... Here's all me. And store deliveries arrive all at the same time. When the high rise opened in 2002, there were 10,000 deliveries a year. Last year, there were almost 50,000 okay. for residents, including okay. Jessica Peck. A lot of the things that I'm looking for, um, I don't necessarily have the ability or the desire to carry home. Her lobby used to look like this, but was remodeled a couple months ago to increase space for packages. The delivery surge is altering the design of new apartment buildings. A larger package storage area was incorporated into this Manhattan high rise. And inside nine on the Hudson across the river in New Jersey, grocery deliveries go to a new climate controlled room. I think it's really just a sign of the times in terms of, you know, how much the internet is affecting people's lives. The Atlas is one of 4,000 properties across the country working with a company called Building Link that tracks and manages packages. The system gives residents the confidence of knowing in real time what's come in and what's gone out. The company recently introduced a program called Imager, which uses artificial intelligence through a smartphone's camera to read a label, record it, and then send a notification to a resident in just six seconds. Amazing. Concierge Thomas Gillen says the new technology is a big time saver. It's a lot easier to, to find stuff and put stuff away. And more boxes are on the way. Amazon is shipping so many packages, it's exploring its own delivery service. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, New York. And stay with us. We'll have one final check of your forecast in a moment.
Maybe get some fresh air in the house tonight. Yeah, That's it's going to feel great outside. Maybe you can give the air conditioning a little bit of a break tonight. You may need it over the next couple of days, just a little bit, though. 76 in Madison right now. A lot of 70s out there, but dew points in the 40s and 50s. Very, very comfortable air in town. And it will stay with us for this weekend. Your day planned are for tomorrow. Temperatures starting off in the upper 50s. Plenty of sunshine once again. Highs should make it into the low 80s with low humidity still sticking around but that humidity does come back as we head into monday temperatures will be in the upper 80s going forward past monday and it will feel like the mid to upper 90s at times those storm chances do return as we head into thursday all right dave thanks thanks for joining us we're back in 30 minutes for news three at six the cbs evening news is next